Task Factory is a suite of SSIS components available from Pragmatic Works. In this video we'll look at two components, the Email Source and the Delete or Move Email Source Messages task. Now, this is what I think is the absolute most coolest control in the whole Task Factory suite, and that is the Email Source. It gives us the ability to grab our data from an email. How cool is that? So let's actually take a look at this. I've got a simple data flow task, and that's all that's in my package right now. So we'll jump in here to the data flow, and I don't have anything in here right now. So let's go down here to Task Factory. Let's grab the email source component, and we'll drop it on the design surface. And I'm going to open it up. Now that it's open, I'm going to be setting some of my parameters. The first thing I need to do is set up a connection manager. So I'm going to create a new connection. Okay, I'm going to come down here, and for my protocol, I'm going to need to pick IMAP so that it's going to be compatible with something I'm going to do later. So here I'm going to pick IMAP, and I've got a sample Gmail account set up just for this particular task. So I'm going to call this imapgmail.com, and my username is going to be arcane code pw at gmail.com. There's my password. Now under the advanced tab, I need to come in here and I'm going to set SSL. Yes, our email connection can actually support SSL so that I get an encrypted connection to my mail server. For the root folder path, I'm going to get this data out of my inbox. We'll come back over here and let's test. Yay, it worked. We'll click on OK and OK. Now I can go set a directory for attachments. And for my attachments directory, I'm just going to navigate down to computer, C drive, go down to my projects, and I'm going to come down here to a pragmatic works folder. We're going to jump down here to my attachments. Okay. So here I can pick filters so that I can limit what email I bring in. This is going to have access to all the mail in my box, and maybe I only want certain messages to come in or from certain people. So here I'm going to set a from email filter, and I'm going to say it should be equal to, and I'll use my work address. There we go, and we'll click OK. And now another thing I can do is create a messages variable and this variable is going to hold an index to all of the messages I'm just now pulling in. The data inside that variable is not going to be overly useful to you right now but it's going to come in handy in a few minutes. So let's click on the drop down. We're going to create a new variable and we'll just call this message IDs and we'll click OK and now that I've got everything set up, we'll click OK again. And now we'll just grab a Task Factory Terminator. If you're not familiar with the Terminator destination, we've used it before in previous videos. And the Terminator just acts like a, a destination that just throws the bits away. But it's great for doing these little demonstrations because I can come up here, right click, go to Data Viewers, we'll add one. And we'll just take the default grid and click OK. So I often use the Terminator when I'm doing debugging or partial package development so I can see how things have gone so far. Alright, with the email source set up, I can actually go send myself an email now. So let's come down here. And you can see here I've got an email message all set up. And I think what we'll do is we'll just get rid of all my signature information and just type in some message. And I could also attach files if I want to, which is probably the most common scenario you're going to see is most of your data is going to come in with a file attached to it. So I'm going to go over here and click send. And then we'll come over here. And you can see I've got my Gmail window open. And wow, there it is already. There's my message. So let's come back to our application. And let's actually run this. 
Now, I do want to mention to you that I have found that Gmail's iMapping can come a little laggy sometimes. So even though you're going to see the message appearing through the web interface, it won't quite be available yet through the IMAP interface. So I think the longest it took me was like three to four minutes before it actually was available for me to download via IMAP. And I tested this a couple of different ways and determined that it was indeed Gmail's IMAPing uh, that seemed to be the issue. Okay, well while you weren't looking, I actually ran this a couple of times before it finally showed up in my box. But here we go, we've got the body text, the body HTML, we've got the subject, we've got who the email is from, the date it was sent, my to address, the size, and note here attachments. If that email had had an attachment on it, then the path where that attachment was stored would be in this particular column. So what you would want to do is probably log that somewhere, either to a variable or to a table, so that you could then use it in subsequent data flows. So I'll just click Detach, and that'll complete the running of that. Now you may wonder, okay, well I've just pulled data out of there, but how in the world do I get it out of my email box? I don't want to keep reading that same email over and over again. Well, to do that, we've got the second component, which goes up here in the control flow. And here it is, it's the Delete or Move Email Source Messages. So we'll come here, we'll open it up, and under Select Connection Manager, I'm going to pick my IMAP one. Now you're going to get a clue why we had to use IMAP. With IMAP, it'll let you both read and remove messages from the server. So here we'll click IMAP, and we had to have our message IDs, which is why we needed to store those message IDs in a variable. So there's our message IDs variable. And if I leave this blank, it's just going to delete the messages. So we'll just leave it blank and we'll click OK. So now when I run this again, we'll go back into Gmail and you're going to see those messages have now been removed. So we'll come over here to our data flow and we can just click on Run. And there's our message again, just showing it to us. We'll go ahead and click the Run. We'll close this. We'll come back over here to the control flow, and you can see that's been executed correctly. So we'll stop this running, and we'll hop back to our Gmail. Okay, we come back in here to Gmail, and you can see the message is gone now. Now behind the scenes, Gmail has actually archived the message for us, but that was a function of Gmail, not of the Task Factory component. But when I come here and I show all mail, I can see that there's our message and it was indeed placed in the archive. Again, that was a function of Gmail, not of Task Factory. Task Factory actually went out and tried to delete it and then Gmail said, oh, you want to delete this? I'm going to go stick it in the archive. And I just, I did that so you could actually see it working. So there you go. We were actually able to pull data from an email source. Through the email source, we were able to access things like the text in the body, who sent it and when. We were able to set up filters, all these wonderful options. And we can also choose where to store the attachments, which is probably the main thing you're going to want to be concerned with so that in your next data flow task, you can actually open up that file and process that data. And then once we were through with the messages, we were able to come back in here to the control flow and we will use the delete or move email source messages task to actually take care of getting rid of those messages once we were done with them. Isn't that cool? To learn more about this or some of the other cool components within Task Factory, visit us at pragmaticworks.com.